Hey guys, welcome to the uh, Asteroid Hunter channel. Uh, my name's Mike. I got Brandon back here behind the camera, but uh, we just uh, we're gonna set up tonight and do a, a quick little thing on this uh, CEM40 mount that we had. And uh, I got that camera on, so I'm gonna say hi to you guys. But uh, um, I got the the mount uh, set up outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just step out, and do kind of a quick review of a few things that I found thus far, and then uh, what I'll do is uh, I'm gonna stop down. I'm going to create another video where I have, um, I'm going to show you how to do the iPolar setup and what I've discovered. Uh, I had a discussion with uh, uh, iOptron today as well. And uh, really just kind of go through um, the driver setup and those kind of things on the computer because it was a little bit of a challenge to get the mount talking to the computer. I had some driver, a lot of driver issues, uh, some uh, .NET framework issues. There was stuff going on. Um, you know, I have custom-built PCs here, and they're pretty loaded out, but, uh, but I definitely had issues. So I can imagine for a lot of people it can be a challenge trying to get some of these things to uh, talk to each other. So uh, what I'm going to do is step outside here real quick, and I'm going to do a quick little overview, and then uh, we'll stop down, and then I'll come back when the sun or the, when it gets dark. It's actually pretty getting, starting to get dark right now, but uh, uh, when it gets uh, dark enough for us to be able to see some stars with the uh, uh, polar scope. So I'm going to switch over here to the uh, other camera. All right, hopefully you guys can see me okay. I know we got a little bit of shadow, but uh, um, is it better over here? Yeah, better. better on this side? Okay. Um, I just want to tell you guys, so so uh, I've been playing with the mount a little bit. It's a, it's a really nice mount, there's no question. The CEM40 is a um, pretty sturdy mount. This is the 8-inch on here, um, and uh, it's... It's uh, it does pretty good, but one of the one of the challenges I've i found. Let me just set this right here so you can kind of see me a little bit better. Um, I really believe um, you got to make sure you really order this thing with the right tripod. So the tripod I have currently is uh, the 1.5. That's what uh, uh, Woodland Hills had me try out here. So let me just get over to the side. You guys see me a little better. Is that a little better, Brandon? Yeah. Okay. Um, the 1.5 is what I have, and I would just say. Really, uh, for this 8-inch SCT, uh, just not quite quite sturdy enough, I think, for this mount head. Um, I think if you have an 80-millimeter refractor, uh, some of the smaller scopes, you definitely could absolutely use the 1.5 without a uh, problem, without question. But putting this 8-inch uh, SCT on here, um, especially when I was, you know, was kind of down, uh, down in this zone, uh, the other night I was looking at uh, Jupiter, and I, you know the scope's kind of down in this zone. It was it was pretty wobbly, and I just noticed that it just wasn't as sturdy with that tripod. So, so I just tell you guys, if you guys order this thing, um, you should make sure you get it with the correct tripod, depending on what instrument you you use. I, you know, they say it handles 40 pounds. You know, I I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, probably does, probably does. Uh, but you definitely need the two-inch tripod if you're going to do it that way. There's no question about that. So uh, make sure you get the two-inch two tripod. It's the most important thing. Also, this thing does come with a uh, Los Monde uh, or Vixen-style uh, uh, plate to hold on to your uh, telescope. So what happens is um, it came in with the Vixen-style, and you can basically take this plate that's underneath here and you flip it over. And you put screws in. So there's some longer screws that you pull out, and you and the shorter screws you pull out, and you flip them around. But but it'll basically handle both uh, styles of uh, dovetail for whichever scope you're using. So I, uh, um, which is really slick. You don't have to buy anything external. If you have an H Edge HD, you just order the uh, the mount head. You don't need any adapters. It'll just you basically will flip the thing over and uh, put the screws back in. Then you have a Los Monte style uh, dovetail on here, which is really nice. So. Um, the other thing that's uh, real slick, these guys, these all have real nice uh, US, a lot of USB cables. They also, this thing does come with a GPS, which is awesome. Um, you know, I know some of the other mounts like Celestron, you have to buy the, the GPS separate. Uh, this one actually comes with it uh, as well, so uh, works really well. Um, I didn't, you know what, they didn't, uh, they didn't give me the counterweight, but I know the counterweight's a little bit heavier. We're actually using a CGX counterweight on here for this 8. Um, not quite exactly the right size, but uh, but it definitely uh, does work. So um, highly recommend that. Also, the um, GoTo Nova system that we're using, uh, really nice system. Um, I did find that 
basically when I when I first started using this thing, you know, I kind of get the 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 uh, eye puller going, and then I wanted to to do some star alignments. But one thing you have to do before you start doing that is you have to zero position this mount out. Really important that you uh, uh, find the uh, the zero position. So. Uh, and basically, you'll, you'll go in there and, and you can set it. It says you can go into zero position and set the zero position. And you would, you know, essentially, you know, get yourself set, set, set up straight up, uh, pointed towards the north celestial pole, and get your zero position going before you do anything. Um, if you don't do that, what will happen is when you go to start um, doing your, your alignment, like your one or two star alignment, you know, you might point at something, and it's it still doesn't know where it's at. It's gonna. The other night, it actually came down, and you know, I wanted to point it to uh, what was it, Arcturus or something, which is right above me. And this this thing came down, and then it, it was pointing out a totally different direction, and it stopped. And it was like, where's it going? As soon as I set the zero position where it's supposed to be, it knew exactly where it was supposed to be going. So, real important that you guys set that. There's a lot of things on here, like electric fo focuser and stuff that you can that you can add with this, which is really nice. And uh, I haven't gotten into that, but uh, I also know a lot of guys use the CEM60s, which are really fantastic mount. Uh, but the, you know, the tricky part with these things is that there's you know some setup that has to happen um, in these things with the uh, configuration of uh, your computers and those kind of things. So one thing that's a little bit of a bummer, guys. I'm just gonna say it. You know, <laughs> mount is awesome, totally an awesome mount. But to do your iPolar, you have to have a computer. So if you're going to be out there in the field, you got to have a laptop and connect it and, and align it through the software, okay? So there's no way to align iPolar through the hand controller, uh, at least not what I've found. And uh, basically, you have to be doing it through your computer. So if you're out in the field, you got to make sure, and if you're going to observe with this mount, which is fully capable of doing those things, uh, you're going to need to make sure that you have an actual um, uh, uh, laptop to be, to to put the eye puller in to get the actual alignment with this thing. There's no, there's a camera that's in here. This one came comes with the eye puller. I think you can get these without. You can you can purchase them without the eye puller. I believe is what I've seen online. So you can do that. And um, um, I mean that's something if you wanna if you wanna just do something like that and and then get get some other option for you, you can do that as well. But if you're gonna use the eye puller, you gotta have a computer system uh, running it. Um, it's a little bit of a bummer because if you're going to go out and just view uh, with it, you still have to get your get yourself lined up, and as opposed to uh, doing doing that. But one thing I've done, you know, like even with the CGX when I'm when I'm uh, asteroid hunting, one thing I'll just do is I'll just do an, uh, a polar alignment where I'll I'll point the thing to north and I'll get the north star right into the center of the eyepiece, um, and I'll even once I I kind of get it pointed, what I'll do is zero the zero the uh, tripod out. And uh, once it's zeroed out, then I then I adjust the alt as and the uh, um, elevation on the thing and get the polar you know Polaris right in the center of the eyepiece. And then I kind of do a star alignment. And then you know I'm using hyperstar, so I have a pretty broad field of view that's kind of back. Uh, if I was using a little bit higher uh, f-stop, you know, like the 11, I think it's f10. Um, you know, you want to be a little bit more accurate. But for hyperstar and stuff, I got a pretty broad field of view, so I can. Uh, get away with a little bit uh, less of a, a polar alignment to be able to go to objects. And I'm only taking, you know, 60 second, 45 second images. So uh, you can do that if you're going to view. It may be something you can do if you're just going to view and you want to kind of get a rough uh, alignment. Uh, it does work that way. So, um, uh, but uh, that's about it. There's, there's uh, just kind of the normal stuff. The, the, the gears are really nice on these Ioptrons guys. They're so smooth, buttery smooth. They sound great. And uh, I just really like uh, the tracking on them. Uh, you don't hear the motors at all when you're uh, when you're out here, uh, you know, uh, slewing around. If you're viewing through the eyepiece, you want it nice and still and quiet, and uh, you just don't hear anything. It's just really, really quiet system. Uh, when I when I was slewing it, I'm con controlling it from the computer in the house. I have to come outside just because I'm like I don't hear this thing moving, and you come out and it's it's slewing around because it's so quiet. So. Uh, really, a, really a nice piece of equipment uh, in that regard, and I really like the Ioptron motors. Uh, they're they're real nice. So um, I don't know what else to say. Uh, you know, you get out there, and I, I haven't done any long exposure photography with it. You know, but I but but obviously you want to get a real true uh, uh, polar mount, the big or polar alignment. The big thing about this is this uh, iPolar system that's on here, and uh, oh, the other thing is too. 
Uh, I had to flip, uh, if you go onto the manual, there's a, to adjust your altitude here, your, um, where you're at, basically I have to, there, this, this thing, go, um, there's these two screws that go onto the front of this thing. And uh, it comes from the factory, like from zero to 25. And then you have to flip the screws and take it from 25 up to 60. So if you live in a little bit uh, higher uh, areas in the uh, northern hemisphere, you're going to want to adjust the screws that are on this thing. So, um, so that's, that's kind of what we, uh, we did on that. So I adjust the screws because we're at about 34 degrees up, up here in southern, southern California where we're located. So, uh, but again, um, really nice mount. I like the mount a lot. It just, I, the, 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 the challenging thing is the eye puller had some trouble just trying to get the drivers going. And I'll go through that with you guys. Just like I said, I'm going to stop down this video. I'm going to show you guys what I did. Uh, it is getting dark out here, so I got this light just so you guys can see me, uh, you know, and that's why the videos, uh, you know, we're in the we're in the light here. So, uh, but I want to do this before I actually set up and got going, so you guys could see what was happening. Um, but again, the the other thing is too this this unit came with the RS two thirty two connector, uh, the the little serial port connector cable that um, goes to like a four pin that you can plug into either the mount or the bottom of the hand controller. I could not get that to work. <laughs> I couldn't get it to work at all. But the USBs work just fine. So I have a hub down here um, that's, that's down here that uh, I got USB from the, from the mount and then uh, there's an actual USB for the actual eye puller on the very back of the mount as well. It says eye puller on it. So I have two USBs going into a hub and that's what's feeding the computer and I was able to get that working. So. Uh, it seemed to work uh, work fine. I had to I had to finagle some things in my Windows settings uh, to get it to to read it correctly, but that's what I ended up doing, and it worked just fine. Um, those of you with maybe some older computers that have a little bit older motherboards that have serial port connectors, uh, it probably worked just fine. I had a serial port to uh, USB. There's a specific chipset that Ioptron calls for. Uh, I can't remember the name of it right offhand, but uh, I ordered that cable, and it didn't work. So, um, but I know there's a specific chipset. So this is pretty new technology from my Optron. When I called one of the guys today, he was like, I'm not super familiar with it. So he transferred me to a guy that was. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, uh, but really nice, really nice unit and uh, really light, portable. Uh, you pull this uh, telescope off this thing, you just pick it up and move it around. It just, it just weighs very little, man. Really, really nice, solid, stout unit for, for the weight category that it is. It's, for it to be able to carry some heavier weight, it's a really, really nice mount for that. Uh, you know, I think if I if I put some extra counterweights on this, I probably could get a nine and a quarter on here and be pretty, pretty solid as long as I have a two-inch tripod. Um, I do believe this fits the tripeer. I've seen that online, guys, with the tripeer. It uses the IEQ30 uh, pinout on this thing, so any IEQ30 and above uh, tripod will fit the CEM40, is what I'm told. Um, so. And again, I've seen guys online with the tripeers that are using this thing and have the CEM40 on it. So there's definitely a few videos out there where the guys doing some some long exposure photography on there, some uh, some night shots, and uh, and having great success with it as well. So really nice unit. But again, I can't emphasize enough: make sure you order with the right tripod. If you're running a smaller refractor, uh, like an 80 mil or something, uh, a little bit smaller stuff, the 1.5 works great. If you're running a little bit bigger SCT, like an eight or above or whatever. You got to go with the two inch. I'm just telling you right now, um, you're not going to be happy. I'll just tell you right now, you're not going to be happy. So, uh, but other than that, really, really nice mount. Ioptron rocks. Uh, they have great support too. You call them up, they answer the phone when I call. Uh, really good guys down there. So, okay, I'm going to stop down here real quick. Uh, my son's going to stop the stream. But what I'll do is uh, we'll start the new next stream here. Uh, it's almost dark enough to be able to get the. Um, uh, the stars into the eye polar, so I'll be able to get the, um, the polar alignment, but I'll just go through you guys kind of what I went through as far as the drivers and the setup on that stuff. So uh, I'll make another video here, and we're just going to stop down and start that here shortly. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you real soon.